tipping off against Max Brooks. And waiting for the go ahead here. First ever meeting. And it's underway, controlled by the Yellow Jackets. Miles Kelly feeds it off to Amari Abram. And we're off and running. Jackets 2-0 with those wins over Georgia Southern and Howard. Meanwhile, the Riverhawks taking down Revere University, a D2 school, and then blowing out Dartmouth on the road by over 30 points. Kelly down the left side. And Tajon Claude has it swatted by Max Brooks. He's led the America East Conference, John, in blocks each of the last two years. Yeah, athletic, bouncy. He's got long arms, really anticipates, and these shot blockers come off the ball, off the weak side right there. He's, he's impressive at the rim. It's going to be an inbound from the corner there from Amari Abram. The Yellow Jackets put up 80 points in each of their first two games and a sloppy turnover there on the first possession. Just a miscommunication right there on the handoff. So Lowell will have a chance to get on the board first in this one. Riverhawks starting four seniors across their starting five. Braden and O'Connor, the sophomore, joining the veterans. And there's a block on the Yellow Jackets side and a quick turnover from Gapari. This is a Riverhawks squad, John, that came within one win of an NCAA tournament berth in America East Championship. It's a group that knows how to win. They went 26 and eight last year. Yeah, a lot of experience uh, and a balanced scoring attack. Um, you know, 11 guys in the scoring column in their last game. But for Georgia Tech, two turnovers already. They only had seven, Wiley, in the last last outing against Howard. In the entire game, seven. Yeah. So, got to keep an eye on the turnovers. Jack is, like you said, taking care of the ball reasonably well. Three-point try there from Ayinde Akeem, who's coming off a 25-point performance against Darton. Abram pops a three, and it swirls out. A look at the Yellow Jacket lineup, same group they've had all three games. Only one returning player, Miles Kelly. The rest, all acquisitions from the transfer portal. O'Connor down the right side, and he hits, looking for a foul. Yeah, it's a strong take. The ability to turn the corner, get to the rim. Braden O'Connor, a sophomore. And Coach Duquette thought, you know, he was high on him last year. Just wasn't ready with the game experience. Um, I had some uh, seniors ahead of him on that roster. So his opportunity is this season. Yeah, he really turned it around those final six games of last year. As he lets one rip. That one in and out of the hands of Kelly and bounced off the shoes of Ty Jean Claude. A savvy move there from Kareem Koulibaly. And O'Connor with that missed three. He's now 0 of 6 from beyond the arc this season, but he, uh, he's got the green light. He's capable. He's just in a little shooting slump early in the season. So for the shot clock at 19 seconds here. And Brooks and Ayinde Akeem going left. Short corner jumper buries it. That was impressive. He gathered with the dribble, stepped back to create space. Great arc on the shot. He's a scorer. He's they're gonna they're gonna go through him offensively. Yeah, and, and you talk to Coach Duquette, he talks about how, you know, over his 10 years at UMass Lowell, speaking of born scorers, Kelly's got two. But in the case of Akeem, they're actually gonna be less equal opportunity and prioritize giving him a chance to find scoring opportunities. Yeah, and tonight, we're talking about a guy, 93 games uh, at the D1 level, 58 starts. Uh, played his first year at LaSalle. There you see the face-up by Brooks. He's capable of knocking that down. Nice-looking shot. Yeah, he's known more for his defensive prowess. Tremendous shot blockers led the league the last two years, but it looks like that jump shot's in good shape. Kelly from the logo off to the right, and Brooks with the board. 6-2, Riverhawks out to an early lead, make it 8-2. Allende Akeem's now got four. And too easy right there, so a slow start for the Jackets. Akeem, the ability to go three quarters of the court to the rim with no contest, um, that can't happen. Mar Abram down the left side. Mar nearly lost the handle. Kelly. And O'Connor ripping down the rebound. UMass Lowell's hit four of seven, three in a row. Yellow Jackets off to a similarly slow start like what we saw against Georgia Southern. Koulibaly, little fake, and a nice 
finger roll and a timeout called by Georgia Tech. UMass Lowell up 10 to two. We're not even five minutes into this one. The Riverhawks playing well on the road again. Well, 6-0 run over the last minute has given the Riverhawks an eight-point lead early. And, John, this time of year, you think you're going to have a, a full roster. The injury bug might bite you later, but not on the start. But for the Yellow Jackets this year, Lance Terry, a returning starter, along with freshman Bayan Dongo, those are two key players absent in these first three games. Yeah, Terry's a guy that, and, you know, you see the points right there, second returning score, um, leading score returning on this roster, but... His IQ is toughness, uh, and then I think Bai will be ready. He's got the length. Uh, he's a four-star recruit. Defensively, he'll be more ready on that side of the ball than offensively, but that's two key absences on this roster early on in the season. Now, last week, Coach Stoudemire noted that Ndongo could be as back as soon as the Cincinnati game next week as Debo Coleman off the bench. He's adjusting to that role well. Meanwhile, Lance Terry might come back uh, closer to maybe the last week in November, even early December. And Debo in the opener against Georgia Southern had 17 points. He was the spark plug off the bench and really got the Jackets going. Down low, Koulibaly, triple team for a moment, going against the freshman Sacco, batting it loose. Seven to shoot. And a blocking foul that time on Tafara Gapari. And Hakeem right there, the savvy play to get, oh, we get a three-pointer in the corner. That's what Debo can do. He's instant offense off the bench. That's his strength. Feet set, shoulders squared. He's 50% he's clip when he's got that, um, those, you know, his shoulders squared to the rim. So, key bucket. Now a freshman for UMass Lowell, Anthony Maxwell. They're really high on him going baseline and bumped out against Kapari. Yeah, that's going to be a quick second foul. As you can see, off the ball defensively, sliding the feet late. He had time, too. He just needed to get there and plant the feet. He anticipated the contact and shuffle them. It's a good call by the baseline official, Remy Steins. Crew led by Jamie Lucky in his 26th season. Working ACC hoops. Maxwell flashes open. Freshman in there just hoping to find a way to slow the game down a little bit. He's got some playing time early as that pass works through Brooks and the team's got it. Eight seconds to shoot. And the lob entry batted. Saved. One second on the shot clock and a foul. Just moments away from the shot clock expiring. And that's unfortunate because that was the best half-court defensive possession in the game for the Yellow Jackets. And with the bailout foul, one second to go on the shot clock. Yeah, Kowasi Reeves just couldn't quite avoid the contact. Hakeem fading away, won't roll. And Miles Kelly, now the Yellow Jackets got the three-pointer from Debo Coleman. That was a long defensive possession. And Kelly that time draws one on Anthony Maxwell. Maxwell's a talented freshman. Uh, had 19 minutes uh, against Dartmouth in the win there. Two points, two rebounds. Um, but Coach Duquette's high on him as a freshman, and he's getting some valuable minutes early on in the season. Yeah, and I think it's one of those situations, John, where you just kind of ride with him until he figures it out as Brayden O'Connor with an eye roll that time as he can't handle the rebound. You know, O'Connor was kind of a similar player last year that they were really high on and, and kept kind of running with him, and then the moment it clicked, he went off. And here you see the last possession. It's the right call off the right knee, out of bounds. Georgia Tech gains possession, 20 on the shot clock. It's Kelly going right lane. Sacco, a freshman with the board and a second chance. Set down low to Coleman and 
They're going to get Hakeem that time reaching in. And UMass Lowell switching the guard to guard screen at the top put Debo in a six inch height advantage rolling down the middle. Maybe something to exploit here if they're going to switch guard to guard. That action looked pretty good for the Jackets on the mismatch with Debo. Sturdivant curling in. And to your point, John, that was one of the reasons Tech had early success against Howard's. They were going to the lane just like that. Yeah, and Miles Kelly on Maxwell in that possession, a four-inch height advantage. Uh, that's definitely something to look at if your coach Stoudemire continue to go at the rim against the smaller guards. Well, after putting up 10 points quick, Riverhawks are scoreless last couple of minutes. Yellow Jackets just two of 10 from the floor. And it kind of felt like that poor shooting percentage from three against Howard was going to be an anomaly. And, you know, all expectations of that it will be, but another slow start for Tech. Kyle Sturdivant, short corner jumper. Yeah, Sturdivant. Savvy senior, a lot of minutes under his belt, uh, a solid assist to turnover ratio in his career, and he can do that, you know. Dribble, stop on the dime, make high quality shots. He's not gonna beat you out there Tate, making poor decisions. High IQ player. Morris whips it to the corner, and that one won't fall for Andres Fulgencio. Coleman with the step on Brooks. And he'll draw the contact against one of the top shot blockers in the league, John. He got a step on yeah. Max Brooks. I think that's the growth I've seen in his game over time. Uh, he was purely just a face-up shooter, but the ability to get the defender to react and drive it to the basket, get to the free throw line, uh, that's a new wrinkle I've seen in his development around his game. And there were some who thought Georgia Tech, you know, might have to make threes early to get inside later in a given game, but it seems like Jack is trying to play inside out tonight by attacking the rim. And like we touched on against Howard, that was one of the reasons they got off to a good start was they were putting their nose down and going in. Yeah, and, you know, credit Georgia Tech, uh, buckling down defensively, but the ability to come off the bench with a guy like Sturdivant and Debo, and now it's a two-point game, make that a one-point game. You weather the storm, trailing eight early. You go to these guys off the bench that were starters last season. So depth, a strength for Damon Sotomayor's squad. And this has been close to the group they've been closing games out with as well with those three returners of Kelly, Coleman, and Sturdivant. Well, they always said, don't worry if you start. It's about who finishes, exactly. you know? That's why so they had you on finishing games on the floor here at Kremens Court. Oh, you need a psych degree now to, to, <laughs> to coach in D1 with the transfer portal. Guy has a bad night, and, you know, next day they, it's not the right fit. So the ability to, uh, you know, play a guy in the starting lineup 15 minutes and then the guys you really want to finish with coming off the bench. But it's the sum of the parts, and, and Coach Stoudemire's done a great job early on in the season. Mincy again reaching in. Ibrahim Asako creating a possible turnover. And we've got a foul. This is going to go against the Riverhawks. Like Sacco's active hands here early. Yeah, definitely a strength. Uh, the five transfers that came in, plus the four freshmen for Georgia Tech. Transfer class was top 20 in the country, ranked 17th. Length was an important uh, part of the uh, the solution in terms of what Stoudemire wanted to address defensively. He's got athleticism, he's got length, Sacco on that possession. Um, he's definitely part of the puzzle there. So the Yellow Jackets have cut it to one. And a heave down low. Good inside out, Reeves a three. Another rebound for Claude. And he works his way. That's a blue collar too right there. Absolutely. Winning plays right there. The offensive rebound, the gather, the strength and poise just to get there to the finish with the left hand. Tyshawn Claude, big play. And a 9-0 run for Georgia Tech after that timeout called by Coach Damon Stoudemire. Off the knees of Morris. And Claude the board. Sturdivant, fade away. He didn't size up the rim until he, about the time he let it go. Connor, this is a ball screen continuity offense. 
So what does that mean? That's what Coach Duquette told us. How would you explain a ball screen continuity offense, John? Well, ball screen continuity, you're going to see ball screens on both sides of the ball. The action is going to flow. Uh, so whether on the left side of the court or right side, uh, it's going to reset. So just continuity. Yes. Come on, Wiley. You know that word. <laughs> might, I'm a Georgia Tech grad, but... There might be some out there who haven't right. heard that term before. If I had the app, I'd be drawing it up right here. Give me, the, give me the red, give me the pointer. We'll see if we, we see if we can get that going in the break here. Tajon Claude's got a quick four points now, and you see there over five minutes. The UMass low put up ten points, but after that timeout, they've gone cold. With continuity offense, it's read and react. Yeah. Uh, you're you're going to stay in a pattern, and there's reads and reacts off of what the defense does. Mincy falling away. His three pointer won't fall, and saved by Sacco. Jackets already an 11-0 run, looking to build on it. Sturdivant. Let's it fly. And it won't fall. Georgia Tech now one of eight from three-point land. Riverhawks 0 of five from distance. Another three, just short. Georgia Tech with that shot now one of eight from beyond the arc. Coleman hits. Make it two and nine. And he's got both of them. A half court defense for the Jackets really settled in here. Some space for Mincy. That one too strong. And Coleman with the rebound. UMass Lowell now 0 for their last eight. Reeves, oh, that would have been pretty. And an over the back bat, Sacco halfway down and out. Claude slow getting up. Yeah, he fell hard, he's sucking some wind too. I think he needs that media timeout. <laughs> yeah. Still looking for it. And there it is, Claude. Kind of taking matters into his own hands. There's yeah, the foul. white flag. He needs a breather. <laughs> Picks up the foul. We'll be back. Jackets by six. Getting after you see great box out crashing from the uh, perimeter, grab the board and Sturdivant knocking it down again. He came off the bench, gave a spark plug for the Jackets. Second chance points on that possession. Tyjon Claude, and then the nice pick and roll action. Again, a high quality shot at the rim. Sturdivant, the senior, coming off the bench, leading the offensive charge. And Debo Coleman, right there, you see. He's the leader amongst all scorers with eight, two of three from beyond the arc. Again, coming off the bench. He's embraced that sixth starter role, as Coach Stadermeyer likes to put it. The Riverhawks have gone seven minutes of gameplay without scoring. Brooks trying to back down Coleman, and that doesn't roll into the hoop for Brooks. It's a high-quality shot coming out of the dead ball. Duquette got it where he wanted it. Nice lefty hook by Brooks, but left it short. Abram, the lefty. Transfer from Ole Miss. Still trying to get him going. He can really shoot it. Coleman going against Brooks once more. Dumps it off to E.B. Dewana, and it's a soft rim on the Yellow Jacket side. Dewana catching it. Good hands. Debo threw it kind of at the midsection. Uh, nice gather and finish. 16-0 run for the Yellow Jackets. And a nice give and go there. Akeem ends the scoreless drought for UMass at seven and a half minutes. And that Brooks and Akeem duo right there in American East is impressive. Gawasi Reeves. That was sudden. The reverse jam. And a little bit of contact there between Coleman and Brooks. And Ayinda Akeem. Look at Kowasi Reeves, though. Get up! The Macon, Georgia product. A local guy coming back from a transfer from Florida. 
he's athletic. I, I love him defensively. Has the potential to be the best defensive player on the court. He's got length, speed. Uh, had some big steals in the last game against Howard that were uh, um, game-changing plays. You know, being a Macon native, you, you think he grew up sh shooting at peach baskets? You know, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that what Naismith was using? Yeah, not much to do down there in Macon, Georgia either, but they do host the GHSA State they Championships. Do. And correct me if I'm wrong, Wiley, I think Kowasi was a, a visitor to Macon for some high school state championship basketball. Solid player, highly touted recruit. And good to see him back home in Metro Atlanta playing for the Jackets. Yeah, we're at West Side High School. Is Got a little blood going on. Got to tape up his wrist. What can a UMass Lowell do here to try and slow down Georgia Tech after taking that 10-2 lead? They trail by six. Oh, I think uh, they, they got to make some shots. They've gone ice cold from the perimeter. And that will help them control pace if they're able to knock down a few shots. And for a team that was one of the best rebounding teams in the country, Georgia Tech is... Having success in the offensive glass. Dewana, double team. And a blind pass looking for Kelly. Instead, it's over to Yuri Covington. And the mix up to the zone defense on that possession uh, really bothered the Jackets. We're not ready for that audible. Kulabali. Ball screen. And Akeem inside to Kulabali. He leaves it short. Dewana the board transfer from NC State in his first year at Georgia Tech. Skip pass. Abram lines it up. Short. Abram now one of six on the season from beyond the arc. He's capable of knocking it down, but just left it short, Wiley. Yeah, Abram, he shot the team best 37% from three last year at Ole Miss. Still trying to find his rhythm in the white and gold. Third game of the season for the Riverhawks, John. And, boy, UMass Lowell, they're not having the same offensive success tonight that they had in those first two games. Well, different opponent on an ACC court. Again, Great percentage shooting for the Riverhawks in the first two games. 60% uh, of those points were coming from the paint. But again, Dartmouth's not throwing the athleticism, the size, and length that Georgia Tech is. And then you're playing on the road in a tougher environment. So I think all those things combined, credit Georgia Tech's effort kind of after the first two minutes. They've really found their footing defensively. Well, that was one of the keys for, for Coach Pat Duquette as well this season. Last year, 26-8, 17-0 at home but just nine and eight on the road and a losing record on the road and conference. Can they play better on the road this year? That's one of the big questions. Got off to a great start leading 10 to two. As you pointed out, they have cooled off considerably since. Eight well, seconds to shoot. You know, they're 0 of seven from beyond the arc. Make oh. that 0 of eight if that was a three from the corner. Didn't see his feet and they have not been to the free throw line, Wiley. So nothing is coming easy. Credit Georgia Tech's defense. Georgia Tech not shooting too much better from beyond the arc either. They're two for 12. But with that said, six offensive rebounds, yeah. so the ability to crash, use their size and athleticism when these shots are not falling, an advantage for the Jackets. Yeah, I know Tafari Kapara threw that out of bounds, but you can just see some of the, the, the bunnies he has as he received that pass over two defenders. Yeah, he's a very talented young man. Uh, he's just got to settle in. That's his second turnover now. Game seems to be moving a little bit fast for him early on in the season. Yeah, he started all three games, but played just 10 minutes against Howard. O'Connor going baseline. Akeem, hook off the glass. Didn't know he had that in his bag, huh? Big time finish. He looked like Stoudemire on that. The yeah, drive did. going up with, you know, throwing the hook shot. Damon used to do a little bit of that in the league. It's a pretty good Mighty Mouse impression. It was. As you saw, 25 points against Dartmouth, a career high for Akeem. Abram trying to get it to Claude. And a jump ball. I like the find, though, by Abram. That was a 
This was a nice find on the other side. Akeem going to the paint against the shot blocker. Nice finish. Allende Akeem Sr. began his career at LaSalle, now in his third year at UMass Lowell. He actually decided to come to UMass Lowell because of the familiarity with the fellow DMV players on this roster. Not a single player on this roster from New England, John, for the Riverhawks. Yeah, that's unbelievable. You know, it's it's a global game, the transfer portal. You're going to you know, get the talent that's out there at the end of the season if you're recruiting late in the game. Uh, the whole recruiting landscape has just changed. And now you look, an extra pass. Reeves for three. And it's Koulibaly. Yuri Covington. Let's take on Kelly there momentarily. There's a three for Covington. It's short. Mm, as you said, UMass Lowell now 0 for 8 from three point land. Kelly, meanwhile, that won't fall. Getting all these bricks out of the way early. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and that possession extended as Covington plays it off a start of him. Well, the Riverhawks not afraid to push tempo. They're trying to change the pace of play. Yeah, they've gone really stagnant. Uh, they've got to get some transition going. So how do you do that? You've got to get stops, get out, fill the lanes, and then push. You know, let Hakeem drive the pace of the game. Anthony Baxwell, the freshman, coming back in. And as far as the three ball is concerned for the Riverhawks, I mean, they lost their two top three-point shooters from last year. That would be Everett Hammond and Alan Blunt, a couple of all-conference selections. And that pass deflected. Maxwell, a little scoop feed. And Koulibaly can't finish from point blank. He has been limited so far, just his fourth shot. Does have four points. Koulibaly, the most experienced player on the court. He's played in 116 games, Wiley. Uh, you know, started at Pitt for two years, transferred uh, to the Bonnie, spent a year there. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience here. We see Miles Kelly, Georgia Tech's leading scorer on the season, trying to get things going, going to the rack. Yeah, Max Brooks said, nah, not that way. That's his second block shot tonight. Had 60 blocks last season. After setting the school record with 68 the year before. Claude's three, that one off the front of the rim. And Ayinde Akeem the rebound. And here comes this tempo you were talking about. All the way, bowling his way to the lane. It's stripped loose, three on one. Sturdivant. Nice finish at the rim. Miles Kelly giving the assist. Georgia Tech again getting out of the lanes, turning good defense into uh, transition point opportunities and finishing there up six now. 3.30 to play in this one, first half. Maxwell, elbow J, no. And Brooks wins the ball back. He and Coleman tangled up. And this foul is gonna go against Max Brooks and UMass Lowell. Yellow Jackets ahead by six. We step aside. Tuesday night hoops in McCamish Pavilion. It's been a physical one so far. Georgia Tech, a six-point lead with 3.22 left on the clock alongside John Babel and Wiley Ballard. And, you know, John, Miles Kelly has really gotten it going in the second halves of games this year. And so far tonight, just two points in the first half. Yeah, and then, you know, if you're Coach Stoddard and the Jackets, don't worry about it because the trends, like you said, he's been a second-half player, 27 points against Howard. 20 of those came in the second half against Georgia Southern, the opener. 25 points in the game, 19 of them coming in the second half. Uh, but you had an interesting conversation with Coach Duquette yesterday. Yeah, he was talking about how they really wanted to be an elite perimeter defensive team, and I think we've seen some of that, no? Yeah, absolutely. They've been uh, committed on the defensive side of the ball, and especially in the half court, but elite perimeter defensive team was the goal. And he believes that's what it takes to beat a team like Vermont in the American East, who's been dominant in that conference over the years. Yeah, he's 
led the Riverhawks to two AEC championship games over the last three seasons. They had a lead against Vermont on the road last year in the AEC final. Could not hang on. Vermont went to the NCAA tournament, and the Riverhawks, their season ended there. Trying to get to the postseason, elevated to Division I 11 years ago. Won a national championship at the Division II level, of course, back in the late 80s. And Akeem, his floater won't go. Koulibaly, an offensive rebound, and there's two, snapping a three-minute scoreless drought. Koulibaly's uh, one of the top performers returning on this roster, a guy that can get it done in the paint, solid rebounder, double-figure scorer. And just creates a steal that time. Two and a half to play, first half. O'Connor directing traffic. The ball screen, Koulibaly walled off by Kelly. And so O'Connor has to hang, and he finds a way to make a tough shot. He's got a big physical presence to him. He uses it, he plays with his physicality. He gets in there, bangs the smaller guard, and finds himself with a high quality look. So the lead down to two, with two to play. Claude searching for options. Gets it away to Reeves. Transfer from Florida, down the right side, double team, and he's hit from behind. Hands to the head for Cam Morris. Can't believe he was called on that. Georgia Tech with a two-point lead. Kowasi Reeves, we'll get a good look at it. There is contact down low, uh, you know, right at the midsection. Too much contact. Reeves, 15 points in each of the first two games this season. Gets the free throw. There's one positive for Georgia Tech. They haven't missed a free throw yet in this first half. That's only the third one they've taken. Yeah, but that was another area where they really left some points on the board against Howard, missing 11 free throws across 27 attempts. Yeah, and in the opener, they left 10 at the line. So a 60% kind of free throw shooting team for two. So good to see them, um, you know, focusing in at the line. Coach Stadamont brings in a little extra defense with Sacco, giving Reeves a blow. Georgia Tech's been rock solid in the half court defense after about three or four minutes into this game. Con with a crossover. Nice job of getting to the rim that time as he leans forward, gets the contact, and Braden O'Connor from Ottawa, Ontario. He's making a his presence felt here in the first half. Yeah, man, he's Canadian. Got a little uh, hockey blood in him. <laughs> Check, you know, to put the shoulder in. Physicality, toughness, I like him. And confident. I mean, he's not backing down at all as a sophomore playing on the road in the ACC. A team like UMass Lowell, you know, not going to go into many environments, high major like this, and he's been impressive. Got to be honest, John, I don't think that hair is fitting in a hockey helmet. <laughs> He's got the facial, he's yes, got the he beard does. though, man. Yes, he, he pass, does. He passes the litmus test for me. I'm a Boston guy. <laughs> I see what these guys look like. He's got hockey written all over him. Oh, no You're a Southerner. What I, do you know? Hey, now. <laughs> we, got, we got the Atlanta Thrashers here for a few years. I, I learned some things there. It's 39 there. degrees this morning. You were cold. I was cold. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I was. <laughs> Sturdivant nearly walks with it. Eight seconds to shoot. Coleman. And he's... Bunked by Koulibaly, and he's whistled for the foul. That'll put the Yellow Jackets at the line here for a one and one. And that will be the seventh team foul on the River Hawks. No one really in foul trouble in this one. Brooks has two for the River Hawks. And Gapare with two for the Yellow Jackets. So a relatively clean first half on both sides defensively. Aside from the three-point shooting, uh, offensively. <laughs> yeah, I was just <laughs> referring to the fouls. Defense, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah, specifically, yeah. you know, not fouling. And yeah, we got a foul going against here against Ibrahim Asako. That's the seventh foul on Georgia Tech now, so that'll put... The Riverhawks at the line for a one and one. 
Ramey Steins had the call on that one and collectively a veteran official crew, probably 75 plus years of experience in the stripes on the court in this one. Yeah, there's Jamie Lucky. This is season number 26 in the ACC for him. He's seen some talent, huh, you think? <laughs> I'd, I'd say so. Ooh. He saw you play, so. Oh, yeah. Quentin Mincy at the line. And the first free throw for Mincy won't fall. So misses the front end of a one and one. Sturdivant feeds down low. Claude carving around. They'll at least go to the line as he gets the foul call. And Claude's a tough matchup down there. He's agile. He's got strength, size, athleticism. And Koulibaly, the minute he puts the arms down, he's hanging all over him. It's like a coat. But I would, I would play that angle. You know, if, you, if you're Georgia Tech, put him in ISO situations. That's a tough matchup, especially you put some fouls on the front line of the Riverhawks. Um, got to look at that matchup in the second half. Well, and, and how critical was it, the foul trouble that Georgia Tech forced Howard into in the final 10 minutes of that win on Thursday? And it was because they had guys like Clock going to the rim. Yeah, and a guy like Koulibaly, uh, it's a huge loss. Six points, five boards. You know, he's you know borderline double double guy this uh, every night this season, and now he's got to sit the last minute. So foul trouble is going to be important stat to look at in the second half. Well, despite some of the offensive droughts that have plagued UMass Lowell so far, they trail only by five as we approach halftime. Keem resetting the offense. Weaves his way past, and Kelly got his hand on the ball. He's going to stick with the Riverhawks, but Akeem takes a hard fall. Yeah, Kelly got in there from behind, um, distracted the play. I think the momentum made it look worse than yes. what it was, but uh, we'll have nine seconds on the shot clock, so situation basketball right here. Here we get another look. It's just he was already falling, and the, mm, yep. you know, the momentum that Kelly pulled over, so... But situation defense is important. Nine seconds on the clock. We'll see what transpires. And it's tipped into the basket by Georgia Tech. Essentially, Miles Kelly got the tip in just in the wrong goal. Yeah. So, one possession game, Wiley. Yeah, that bucket will go to Akeem, or Mincy, rather. Mincy gets credit for it. Got a two-second, three-second difference. The Tech want to play a little four corners here, kill some time. Yeah, in the bonus. We look to get the taller guards, Debo or Kelly, going to the rim. Off ball screen, freeze Kelly. Sturdivant, pull up, three pointer, back iron. And there's still time on the clock. They heard the, the shot clock buzzer, thinking it was the end of the half buzzer. Yeah, but at the half, Lowell, that the defense has actually been winning the day for Tech in the first 20 minutes. So here we go, Amari Abram at the point for Georgia Tech. UMass Lowell looking for just their second ever win over a Power 5 program. And second half, Miles Kelly, not yet. First possession for the Riverhawks. There's a ball screen. Akeem gets it, plus the foul. Tafara Gapari picks up his third in the opening 30 seconds. Kapari is just going to have better awareness. Um, Ill-advised foul on a good shooter in the paint. He was not going to block the shot. Right there, you've, as a player, you, you've got to have the ability to not foul in that situation. And Hakeem makes him pay. Three points. Now we have a tie game. Give credit to Lowell. That gives Hakeem 11 points on 13 shots. So it hasn't been a model of efficiency as much as just, just been persistence for Akeem and the Riverhawks. As Claude is stuffed, O'Connor got his paw on it. Now the Riverhawks looking to land a blow. It won't fall. Claude with the rebound and Amari Abram bringing it up. High low and it's swatted away by O'Connor. Look at the activity for the sophomore. He's setting up shop on the wing. He pops a three. It won't fall, but the tip in on the second chance is in. 
that's a tough trio right there. And throwing Kula Bali, I mean, in the America East, it's four really high-level players. Yeah, Kula Bali began his career at Pittsburgh, transferred to St. Bonnie's. Reeves looking to respond, won't go. These teams combined two for 27 from three. Looks like it's a nose to the grindstone here and try and work in the paint. And a long jumper from Koulibaly off the back iron. 7-0 run to begin the second half for the Riverhawks. Kelly, a three, too strong. Abram penetrates with the left, no, but he'll go to the line. Abram, the ability to probe, dissect, and take the contact. Chance to go to the line. Good look off, good change of pace and takes the contact right at the end there by Brooks. That's now three on Brooks. Abram at the line. He's now five of eight this year. And Cam Morris, junior from Alexander City, Alabama. Down by Montgomery. Two and a half hours here from Atlanta. He checks in. Spent some time down at IMG Academy. Mm -hmm. Highly touted prep program year after year down in Florida. And we're back even after those two free throws from Abram. Truly really a three-man rotation in those four or five spots for UMass Lowell and Cam Morris. That third option still a solid one. He's put up 14 points in each of the first two games. They feed it down low to Morris, and he's swatted away by Campari with the second chance. And Morris has got a couple. His first points of the night. Claude. And he draws contact. Patrick Kent not happy with the call. Felt as though Tyshawn Claude made the contact. There you see Capare with a nice block shot. The second effort, the ability to stay with it, the poise by Cam Morris, 23. Claude misses the first free throw. And Coach Pat Duquette's looking for some sympathies there from a fellow Massachusetts. Hey, we're New products. Englanders, you know, <laughs> yeah. caught up before the game. <laughs> he was coming up the ranks. He was a great player at Williams College back in the day, but. Uh, when I was in my high school ball in, in Massachusetts, he was just getting his coaching start kind of the D2 level. Well, if you believe in ball, don't lie. Tech misses both free throws. Morris, four points here in the second half. The Riverhawks, look out, creating separation up four. It's a similar start to the second half to what we saw in the first half. UMass Lowell lands the first blow, a 9-2 run to begin the final 20. Well, all great journeys begin somewhere, right? For head coach Bat Duquette, it was in Dalton, Massachusetts, where he fell in love with basketball, went on to play at Williams College, and then decided to pursue the coaching profession, intern with the Nets, a few years at D3, and then 13 seasons at Boston College. He worked his way up from administrative assistant to associate head coach, and now the head coach in his home state at UMass Lowell, John. Yeah, he's had a great run, and you know, working for a guy like Al Skinner during his time at Boston College, lots of success. Al was successful up at Rhode Island before Boston College, um, but you know, he's a New Englander. He's got he's got the hoodie sweatshirt on. I mean, it's the Bill Belichick inspired hoodie. He's coaching fraternity up there in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. Much like Bill Belichick, Coach Duquette, building from scratch, starting that Division One program in his first season. Of course, UMass Lowell D two program for decades. But he was their first coach as they went to Division I. And twice in the last three years, he's gotten them within one win of an NCAA tournament. Coleman fading away. And Kelly on the follow-up taps it in. And Miles Kelly may be coming to life here for the Jackets. Yeah, and a night where he was just one of nine from the field, 0 of 5 from three. That could get him going. That's you know, a little confidence boost. Well, keep in mind, in the first half, 
Riverhawks went on a 10-2 run. Coach Stoudemire called timeout. A 14-0 run for Tech ensued. Looking for a similar formula here. Sturdivant driving, hanging, leaving it short. Team will step back. Koulibaly on the freshman, Sacco. And Sacco with the rebound. Enough of a challenge that time from the freshman from Guinea. Big time rebound by Sacco, just going after it, making his presence felt in the paint. Tech looking to tie. How about take the lead? Yes! Debo Coleman, his third triple of the night. And credit Sturdivant, the senior. One extra dribble to suck the defender in. The look off, he knows where his shooter's at in the corner. Great teamwork. And Kelly reaching behind, and he's caught. As he tried to pick Hakeem's pocket. And we'll get another look at that three-pointer. Jackets now is good enough to take a one-point lead. Sturdivant, the senior, the look off the kick. Nothing but net. Debo Coleman getting after it on Kremen's court. Tell Debo Coleman it's a tough shooting night. The junior for the Yellow Jackets with a game-high 12 points so far. Yeah, 15-plus minutes of play. He's made his impact felt from beyond the arc. Three of four from three. Start event with a nice dime on that possession. Debo converting. It's also three of four from the free throw line, 12 points. He's been the impact player offensively. Again, coming off the bench. That's a new role for him this year. And look at that number. Debo Coleman, three for four from three-point range. Every other play on, on the floor is a combined 0 for 26. That's, you know, that's amazing. That's an amazing stat. Pound your chest, Debo. You got something to brag about out there. Say, I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Three of four, and we're 0 of 26 Six. collectively? It's unheard of. I'll have what he's having. So you mess Lowell out of the timeout here. Where will they go? Where else? Akeem. 0 of 26 from three was a, a typical November for me on my stat line. <laughs> I'm not sure you got 26 attempts up there, though, John. No, I didn't. <laughs> and Akeem's jumper fadeaway is short. Catch and shoot. That one too strong. And it continues for UMass Lowell. They're 0 for 11. This is a team that showed over 40% from three. Coleman gets his own miss to the bucket. And there's two more. Hustle play right there. Sturdivant. That was almost instant replay. He missed the three and then the... You know, the knack and the ability to just go get it. Chase it down, manufacture two points. So the Yellow Jackets erased a 9-2 Riverhawk run with a 7-0 run of their own. And looks like we got a poke in the eye here. Yeah, not sure if it was Sturdivant or Sacco. I think a foul is going to go against Sacco. And we'll see active hands off the ball right there. Sacco, bam, right hand to the eye. Covington looks like he's recovered, doesn't seem to be in too much pain walking off. Here's O'Connor. Sophomore was hot in the early stages, but quiet since then. Hakeem taking on Sturdivant, and there's a foul. On the Yellow Jacket point guard. Yeah, you had mentioned uh, Braden O'Connor, maybe the highest level in terms of talent, talented recruit uh, that Coach Duquette has had on campus. He made that comment to you when you spoke with him yep. on the phone yesterday, and I see it. I mean, he's arguably the best player, or most talented and well-rounded player on the court. And they're going to him. Bowling over Reeves. And Coach Duquette adamant he wanted a blocking foul that time. And rightfully so, lots of contact on that possession. Uh, but Coise does a nice job, keeps his arms out. Uh, it was a clean play. He almost had a chance at the charge. So you're good with the no call? Yeah, Duquette had me sold, man. He's a Boston <laughs> guy. He's doing sales. Debo Coleman. 
taking the Jackets for a ride here tonight. 16 points now. Here we'll see transition opportunity right now. Good decision making. Again, pace of play. Debo, you know, running the lane. But again, that possession right there started on the defensive side of the ball. We're starting to see a trend. Georgia Tech up five. Um, they were absent of those type of runs in the first half. Yindi Akeem hits the first free throw. Snaps a 9-0 run for the Jackets. And here comes Max Brooks back in. He's got three fouls. Lead down to three. Keem now with 13 points. Perfect three of three from the free throw line. Sertivon taking on the freshman Maxwell. They get the switch. And Sturdivant with a soft teardrop. Pretty. The senior had him up in the, put the hands up. Went under and nice finish. Brooks didn't want to get the foul either. He's got three, playing with three, so little to no resistance on the tail end of that play. Max one of the lane, and a whistle comes in. Foul's going to be on Miles Kelly. One more look at Kyle Sturdivant's moves here. Yeah, the straddle dribble, side to side, the step through. That's a veteran move right there. Give it up for the senior. It's a little up and under. Tafara Gapari will check in for Miles Kelly. That was Kelly's third foul, by the way. Akeem pulls the trigger. Short. He had Kapari measured up, had the space, just came up short. And Ibrahim Asako trying to go the distance of the court. He'll go to the line. Hey, man, he saw an opportunity. He took it. I mean, there was no slowing down. He said, I got a mismatch. Mincy, come on, put it on the hip. Get to the line. Nice recognition there. Uh, the ability to see the mismatch, get to the rim, and have a chance to make free throws uh, in a crucial tight game, two-possession game. What does that tell you when you see that from a freshman like Sacco? You know, I, I just think his awareness and, and his confidence is what stands out. He, he saw the play, he had the confidence to make it, and then his ability uh, to get there and do it. Putting it all together as a freshman, sometimes hard to do. One of two freshmen from Conakry, Guinea, Ibrahim Soare, who's on the bench. Also from the same hometown, and oh, a sloppy turnover from Max Brooks. Ooh, and he's <laughs> trying to calm himself. Yeah, he wishes he had that one back, but, uh, you know, only the seventh turnover in the game for UMass Lowell. They've done a very nice job in that department. Breeze looking for space. A couple of crossovers. And Kapari taking on contact, and we got a foul on the floor here. Uh, Kareem Koulibaly. And that, he's now at four, John. Three, all four in the second half. Yeah, that, that hurts. He's one of the returning starters. He's got a lot of veteran minutes under his belt, so he's going to play with four. Coleman, another three off the mark, wide right. Sacco, the offensive rebound and stick back. Sacco making some big plays. Not a stat filler by any means, but the timely bucket right there on that possession and then his, his energy. It's infectious. Well, he leads the team with seven rebounds. Those are his first points. And a high-low feed and finish. Well, that's why you keep Koulibaly in the game right there. Yeah, it was a big time, uh, big time way to respond by the Riverhawks. They needed that one. Still a two-possession game. Can't shake them. And Sturdivant looking for a goaltend call. And he will get it. This will be an and-one opportunity for Sturdivant. 
Yeah, easy call. It looked like from here, Brooks went up. The ball was on the way down. Well, we'll get a good look at it. Or may have hit the, did it touch the glass? He got it like coming off the glass? I can't tell from that angle. One more look at it. Yeah, it's yeah. off the glass. It hits the board and you hit it going towards the rim. That's automatic. Easy call. Well, Jamie Lucky and his crew want to take a look at it. But again, once once you're off the glass, this ought to be pretty quick. Both teams have a chance to huddle up here. Yep, that was quick. <laughs> After review, the basket is good. Goaltending. Charge to UMass Falls. So it'll be 43-36 with Sturdivant going to the line. Tell you what, in the days of lengthy reviews, John, that was one of the quickest we've seen in a while. Yeah, I'm just impressed at how high Brooks got up on that play. Well, again, he's six foot seven, but he, again, the Bunnies, the guys led the American East Conference in blocks each of the last two seasons. And when you factor in Morris and Koulibaly, that's three of the top four shot blockers in the conference last year. So, I mean, they'll be able to protect the rim. Absolutely. That's that's a solid all Windex team right there on the same <laughs> roster, just cleaning the glass. Man, that's an NIL opportunity just waiting to happen. Yeah, Windex, get in there. And free throw is short. Akeem <laughs> burrowing through and finding a little bit of a sliver. Yeah, he's now done that a few times tonight where he goes three quarters of the court and right to the rim. He's, he's got great court vision and he finds his advantages. Picks his spots. Sturdivant hits. And that's where he's at a disadvantage on the height side of things. Sturdivant goes right back at him. He's got the length and size and strength. Makes him pay. Yeah, Keem is just 5'11". But he's the Riverhawks' leading scorer with 15 and another two for Koulibaly. So here early, Coach Duquette getting rewarded for keeping Koulibaly in the game even with those four fouls. Put the freshman Sacco on his back and what an easy look. Kapari a three doesn't go. A game that's 45-40, pace of play, advantage UMass Lowell. They're, they've got the ability to muck it up, make it ugly, keep it a one or two possession game. Then anything can happen down the stretch. That one won't fall for Koulibaly. Kapari having trouble getting up. And he and Koulibaly are kind of going at it there. And a whistle was called. Kapari tried to get up while he was between Koulibaly's legs. And Koulibaly took exception to it. We're going to step aside. Georgia Tech, a five-point edge. Things get a little chippy here as we approach the final 10 minutes here in McCamish. Tech, head by a handful. What was it you said about it's not how you start, it's how you finish? Yeah, you said it right there. I mean, that's uh, second half trends in shooting. Georgia Tech's had a knack for showing up in the second half, and we're seeing it again tonight. Eight of 17 for the Jackets, 47% in the second half, so they're getting hot. And to be fair, Coach Stadamar was clear. Right? The comeback they had against Howard down by 14 in the second half, they, they cannot do that routinely. That cannot be their formula, or they're really going to have a tough time this year. But at least you're seeing signs of resilience and an ability to rally. This went a long way from over, of course, up by five with 11 minutes left. Yeah, we're talking about a River Hawks team that had 26 wins last year. They returned three starters from that team. And you add a senior with 100-plus games of uh, Division I experience to that group. So they're not going to go away. Georgia Tech, the stat that stands out, they've left five points uh, off the board at the free throw line, just two of seven in the second half. And Claude... Bottom of the iron, and now a foul. Going to be a one-and-one one opportunity, or maybe no two shots for Coleman. It's going to be charged to Andres Fugencio, junior transfer from Division II Bloomfield State. 
both teams now with six fouls. We got a solid 11 minutes left in the second half. Coleman now four or five, Wiley, four or five from the line. So again, he's coming through for the Jackets. He's now with 17 points. That's the second one. And Fulgencio's got it. Things have improved for Georgia Tech offensively in the second half. They've also improved for UMass Lowell, though. They're shooting over 40%. Koulibaly down low. And he's going to have a chance for a three-point play. Uh, excellent execution. The high-low that kind of went right down the middle of the paint kind of eliminate the weak side help. You're going right from, they say, the nail at the free-throw line. What you're doing there is eliminating weak side, the lob pass, and convert. Tough to execute, but it's a great job all the way around by the Riverhawks. And now the lead down to three. UMass Lowell, four for four from the free throw line in the second half. Koulibaly's got seven points in the second half. Again, playing with four fouls and a turnover. Akeem racing ahead, finger rolling in. It's a one-point game. And Sturdivant, he had the right idea. Just um, a turnover in traffic, and the wrong guy gets it, converts two on the other end. If you're the Jacket fan out there, you don't want to give that guy the ball, number two, with a chance to make plays. And a, another turnover, back-to-back -back possessions. They had just one prior to that in the second half. Hakeem again, look at the court vision, the awareness, the look off, too easy, right? He makes it look easy out there. I think he's done that a time or two. In his fifth season of college hoops. Brooks finds O'Connor who's wide open, left alone, and UMass Lowell has the lead. And just a little flex cut on the baseline, and former ACC coach, uh, Notorious for that action, Gary Williams at Maryland. That was a continuity offense. Yes, the flex. It sure was. We're talking about continuity offense. This <laughs> may be the best ever with ACC ties, that Maryland flex offense. And Kula Bali, another opportunity for a three point play. The Riverhawks, a 9 0 run. And that was a quick nine right there, like a minute and 15 seconds or so. And yes. Minute 12. Minute 12. Three-point lead. Jackets reeling a little bit right now, right? You know, this kind of sucked the energy out of the building this last uh, minute and 12 seconds. It's quiet in here. And what can you say about Coach Duquette? You know, a lot of coaches, a guy like Koulibaly, they might try and steal a few minutes. He's asking us now. Coach Duquette was... <laughs> I think was he was asking us if he should leave him in. Let's roll with it. They're going to sit Koulibaly now. He came over to you, Johnny. He wanted your opinion. I don't know. He said, I, he said do, do I leave man? I, I, I think I you got a chance to win. Let's yeah. roll with it. You're on fire. Don't, don't mess it up. Well, I think right now it's not even a matter of, of protecting him from foul trouble as much as maybe just getting him a breather. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the right call. Plenty of time. 9.28. UMass Lowell in command right now, up four. It's a Jackets team with their length, their size, athleticism. We've seen it. They can go on runs. And this team for Georgia Tech hasn't blinked either this year. We're facing some deficits in the second half. They trailed by 14 against Howard on their home floor last week. Mari Abram. And they get Miles Kelly going. A little roll there from Coleman. Kapari may have gotten away with the travel that time. Reeves into the lane. Doesn't have the touch. Morris the rebound. Well, Braden O'Connor's been doing a nice job on Kelly, just shadowing. And, and you mentioned, uh, you said he's one of the best perimeter defenders on this roster. Now a skip pass. Brooks, free throw line jumper, no. Kelly's got the rebound. Great contest by Reeves. He was there on the catch. Kelly denied by Mr. Brooks. That looked like a volleyball spike. 
You can't come weak against Brooks, man. He's going to send it. Elite rim protector right here. Jack is trying to snap a 10-0 run. Three-pointer. Yep. Amari Abram cash. His first three-pointer of the night. It's his first basket of the night. And O'Connor and these three-point plays becoming routine for UMass Lowell. Oh, it's beautiful execution. He turned down the double screen high, read the back door. We don't see the action off the ball. There was a double screen set high. You can see behind the play. Sets him up high, cuts back door. Unbelievable execution by UMass Lowell. Braden O'Connor now with 10 points. One of three Riverhawks in double figures. Koulibaly 16, Hakeem a team best 17. This is a Georgia Tech team that's been solid in the half court through two games. They haven't had to extend and, and take risks. So if they get down in this one, it'll be uncharted territory, at least this season, if they've got to extend the D and start trapping a little bit. They've been fairly conservative, principle-based defensively and doing a solid job in the paint. Step back. Oh, man, Akeem. Drills a three, and UMass Lowell with their largest lead of the second half. The Riverhawks on the road looking for the upset win. Up by seven, and the fifth year seniors put the Riverhawks on his shoulders. Absolutely. He's got 20 points in the game. Second half, though, 12 points in 12 minutes of play. He's one of three from the three, three of three from the free throw line. Doing it all over the court right now, and his confidence, uh, it kind of exudes and permeates to his teammates. Feeling it right there. You like that facial work right there, huh? <laughs> yeah, you tongue that. out. Look How at him. He's, not like he's it. playing the drums. He's, he's, la he's relaxed. He's relaxed. It's feeling good out there. That was the first three-pointer of the night for UMass Lowell. They were 0 for 12. Can the Yellow Jackets respond? They've brought Claude and Sacco back into the game, trailing by seven with seven and a half left on their home floor. Kelly's been ice cold tonight. Abram into the lane, a floater, and it's in. Nice job by Abram getting in the paint. Sweet finish, the lefty in traffic, the teardrop. He hadn't quite gotten it going offensively yet, John, but he's got some offensive pieces to his game. Best three-point shooter on Ole Miss's team last year. And his decision-making's been pretty solid. He's taking high-quality shots. He's not forcing it. It's kind of a veteran approach to the game. O'Connor trying to answer, and that three-point shot is open now for the Riverhawks. Lead is up to eight. That matches their largest of the night. Kelly can't buy it. He's now two for 13 and 0 for six from three. A big possession right here defensively for the Jackets. Um, try to keep this in single figures in terms of your deficit. O'Connor working against Kelly to the lane. He's bumped. He's got the basket and a chance for one more. He's just taking it to the Jackets. Uh, he, he, just kind of bulldozes his way in there, and uh, he's a believer. Finishes in traffic. Here you see with the three. Inside out, he's doing it all. How about this? The contact, the finish off the glass on the way down. He's going to go to the line. O'Connor, the sophomore, really stepping it up. A new career high, 15 points tonight for Braden O'Connor. The lead, 11. A 21 to five run for UMass Lowell since the 11 minute mark. Sturdivant trying to find something. Kelly in the lane. 
Claw, the offensive rebound. He goes up and he'll go to the line. The foul is on Akeem. Jamie Lucky, the veteran official, calling it from outside the paint. Had a great look at it. Definitely contact. Big free throws, though, right now for Tyshawn. He's one for four there tonight. Yellow Jackets, that's been an area of concern so far this year, the free throw shooting, right around 60% on the year. They're 10 of 18 tonight. They've left eight at the free throw line, but trying to change that trend, chipping away. As we've said a couple of times tonight, John, it all starts in the defensive end, and the Riverhawks continue to find open shots. Well, they're four of their last four from the field, so they've got a little momentum, a little consistency. Akeem trying to create. He does. He's got a nose for the basket, and Coach Duquette wants a timeout. He didn't get it. Okay. Kelly desperately trying to get going. He misses the lip. Claude there to pick him up. Morris down the lane, a bump, and an offensive foul. Remy Steins had his feet set, had a great look at it. Veteran official. It's going to go the other way here. We'll, we'll see. What do you think, John? A little bit of movement. I think Georgia Tech gets the benefit of being on their home court right there. Sometimes you need a little luck, Wiley. Jackets looking for anything they can get right now. Well, one thing's for certain, they are running out or running low on time. Five minutes, 20 seconds. And as far as Georgia Tech's offense is concerned, John, they'll have the ball coming out here. Do you keep pulling triggers on the threes? You're four for 26 tonight. You look at the first three games you played this year, including those two exhibitions, they shot 46% from three. But the last couple of nights, that long ball hadn't been falling. Yeah, four of 26 from beyond the arc, but you know, it's more important is, uh, are they quality shots, number one? Number two, who's taking those threes? You got your best player, 0 of six. Um, to answer your question, if Miles Kelly gets a good look from three, although he's 0 of six, I'm saying shoot it all day. Yeah, the trend's gotta change, but you're gonna win or die by the three-pointer, and tonight, you know, trailing nine, 520 to go. If you get a good look from three, you take it. Between Kelly, Reeves, and Abram, those are three guys that Georgia Tech expects to be three-point threats this year. They were combined one for 14 tonight. Hey, hundreds, thousands of threes these veterans have put up over time with their assistant coaches and player development. Hasn't dropped yet. I say you got to shoot the three. If it's a good look, take it. Tech showcased it in their opener against Georgia Southern. Alley, you claw stuff. Kelly there with the loose ball and an easy two, trying to get him going. He's now got six points on 16 shots. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, the alternative, you go at a, you know, elite level shot blocker like Brooks, you're not getting easy twos. So statistics, analytics say, take the layups in transition, take the threes when they're open. High percentage shots. O'Connor picked up his dribble. Koulibaly's checked back in with four fouls. Goes to Brooks. And it's blocked by Reeves. Loose ball to Kelly. The Yellow Jackets trying to make a run. Sturdivant turns it over. And trying to get it back, and he picks up the foul. Akeem makes two heady plays in a row. The ability to uh, he kind of trick Sturdivant into the pass, and then he stops on a diamond transition and picks up the foul. But here you see Reeves. This is where he's active. He does a nice job rebounding from the perimeter and also making plays, defensive stops. But right there, heady, heady defensive stop. And then he stops on the dime, the awareness to get the foul. That's a high IQ player. This will be two shots for Akeem, a seven-point lead for UMass Lowell, looking for just their second-ever win over a Power 5 opponent. It's a perfect four of four from the free throw line. They've, as a team, UMass Lowell is eight for eight from the line in the second half. 
Georgia Tech, meanwhile, five of 11 in the second half from the free throw line. Trailing by nine, that one win for UMass Lowell against a Power Five team, by the way, came against Boston College in the fall of 2015. Kelly taking on O'Connor, and he'll get to the line. And for as much as we've talked about Kelly's inefficiency offensively, a lot of it has to do with the defense he's faced tonight. And gets the benefit of you know driving, and there's bodies, there's traffic. Kelly, the star player, he's going to get calls. If he puts himself in situations like that, he will get the benefit of the whistle. His first free throw tonight does not go. Just one of those nights, Wiley. He can't find it. Can't get it going. Was averaging 26 per game coming in. He has six points tonight, three of six from the field, 0 of six from beyond the arc, 0 of one at the free throw line. Hits the second, but for Miles Kelly, after setting the school record in free throw percentage last year, he's shooting just 60% in the first three games this season from the line. Eight point game. And again, the guy's put up 27 and 25 points these first couple of games, so he's found a way to get it going, but not tonight. And that foul against Ibrahim Osako. Braden O'Connor's tough. <laughs> he can handle, he can post, he can, you know, he's just a tough matchup. And defensively, he's doing the job on, on Miles. So that's three fouls on Sako now. Also three on Sturdivant, Kelly, Gapari, and Claude. And O'Connor continues the perfect free throw line effort from UMass Lowell in the second half. Uh, Duquette got a steal right here. This kid's a sophomore. America East talent. He's, I mean, he's given the high majors all they can handle right now as a soft. 10 point lead, under four to play. Can Georgia Tech find their shooting stroke? Kelly going up, no, batted high in the air and in. That's what you gotta love about Miles Kelly. Keep playing, fighting, clawing, second effort, made something out of nothing just from his hustle and effort. Kind of saw some of that isolation against Howard at the end of the game for Georgia Tech, but they need stops. Can Akeem keep it going? He's got 24 points. Feeds to Brooks who has it stripped. Coleman's got it. Great position defensively by Coleman, being there, ready for it. Can he get the three? Yes, he can! And the lead sliced in half in a matter of 30 seconds. And Coach Duquette wants a timeout. UMass Lowell trying to hang on. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets seeking a final gasp here. And Debo Coleman has hit four threes tonight. Georgia Tech trying to stave off the upset. First year head coach Damon Stoudemire breaking the huddle. Looking for some mental toughness from his team. That's how he challenged his group this weekend. He's talking to Kelly and Coleman here along with the whole team. And mental toughness, Wiley, what does that look like in the last three minutes? Take care of the basketball. If you go to the free throw line, knock them down. Defensively, one and done. Don't give up the offensive glass. UMass Lowell, they have momentum. They've got nothing to lose. Playing with house money, you know, definitely their advantage, plus five. And really, there's there's no pressure other than to hang on. The Riverhawks have put up 45 points in the second half after scoring just 23 in the first half. They go to Akeem. Feeds inside to Koulibaly, double teamed. Looking for Brooks who cuts in. Oh, and he just missed a chance for another three-point play, but Max Brooks will go to the line. These are, his, these are his first free throws of the night. Right here, boom, boom. Got fouled twice. The foul on Sacco's his fourth. And 
And Brooks misses. We'll have a chance though, just reset. Form looked good. Claude comes in for Sacco, and Kareem Koulibaly takes a seat trying to play delicately. He's got four fouls. They want to use him on offense. Brooks hits the second. Six-point edge for the River Hawks. Kyle Sturdivant, the fifth-year senior, guarded by Akeem, a fellow fifth-year senior. Coleman, another three. Yes, and the foul! Debo Coleman single-handedly willing Georgia Tech back into this one. And that's the fourth foul by Brooks on the tail end of that play. So you got a chance for a four-point play. You put a fourth foul on the shot blocker defensively, their best presence on interior defense. So big possession for the Jackets. Unfortunate right there for UMass Lowell. Brooks got to find a way to avoid the contact on that play. This circumstance... Debo Coleman with now a career-high 23 points. Make it 24 in a two-point game. Automatic. Yeah, he's really embraced this role coming off the bench, and you said it's not who starts. It's who finishes, Wiley. It's Debo Coleman time. The crowd here in McCamish is coming to life, and Claude deflects it. Last touched by the Riverhawks, and it's Georgia Tech basketball. Cam Morris, uh, he thought his teammate Kulabali was getting held from behind. We'll see, now it was just a bad angle. Tyshawn Claude, a nice job getting into the passing lane, forcing that turnover, position defense right there. Doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but he worked hard to take away that interior pass. Georgia Tech has trailed by as many as 11 in this second half. It'll stay with Georgia Tech. Contested by Akeem there. And both teams with one timeout remaining in this one. So situation basketball. We'll see right here. 15 on the clock almost. Going to Claude underneath. He's bothered from behind by Morris. Riverhawks the other way. And they put it in the hands of Ayinde Akeem. What would be one of the biggest wins in UMass Lowell's history? They're two minutes away. Spin, Akeem, no, clawed the rebound. Georgia Tech trying to tie it. They go to Coleman for the lead. Claude's got the rebound. Now it's Kelly. He's hit some big shots. Been a tough night. Hanging up. Georgia Tech wants the goal 10. They got it. Yeah, I think if we get a look at that and hit the backboard, that's going to be automatic goaltending. So the game is tied. They will review it. Goaltending on the floor. And more importantly for the Jackets, Miles Kelly is still down, injured on the court. I, I don't, he's getting up slow. Right there. He uh, hit it before the backboard. Yeah, he did hit it at the highest point. Um, be a tough decision right there. Jamie Lucky, lead official all over it, seeing if that was on the way down. Kelly is up and in the huddle, hands on his knees, grimacing, but Got up under his own power. Game currently tied at 69. It'll either be one free throw to take the lead or two to tie it. This is overturned, and the signal is it is confirmed. Goaltending, we have a tie game. Stoudemire having words with his team, going through all the situations, all the scenarios. You got one timeout to use if you get in trouble. But it's more about defense 
and rebounding, not fouling, not putting UMass Lowell to the free throw line. All the little things. We pointed out how Miles Kelly has struggled at the free throw line this year, John, but you go back to the end of that Howard game, he hit two big free throws and neither touched any bit of the rim. He drilled them. A huge free throw here to give Georgia Tech the lead. Kelly's one for two tonight. Off the back iron, the rebound controlled by Morris. Tie game, 90 seconds. They got to go to Akeem here, right? Absolutely. Or Braden going to the basket. His size and strength, he can draw contact. To Akeem, he wants a ball screen. He's got one from Morris, guarded by Sturdivant. They get the switch. Another kick out. Morris, baseline, two to shoot. He goes up. He's got it. Count it. The foul. Cam Morris. Big time finish right there. Unselfish play. Georgia Tech did everything they could. They switched. They had great length. Forced the pass at the end of the shot clock. Great offense, UMass Lowell. He's fired up, Morris, rightfully so. UMass Lowell's gonna have a chance to leave Atlanta with a win. That foul on Tyjon Claude, his fourth. And he sinks his first free throw of the night. Riverhawks by three, one minute left. Riverhawks, 13 of 14 from the free throw line, second half. Coleman has been money tonight. Sturdivan drives to the lane and cuts it to one. Big shot by the senior. Coach Duquette telling Akeem to kill some time. Akeem nods. When will he go? Tech, you've got to protect the offensive backboard here. You've got to box out as a team. Try to get a one-and-done situation, a contested two. Five on the shot clock. Hakeem, step back, three. Off the backboard, an offensive rebound, but it did not hit the rim. That's a shot clock violation. Georgia Tech basketball. 17 seconds to go. Bonus situation, Georgia Tech with one timeout left. We'll see if Damon Stoudemire wants to talk it over, and he does. One more look, Allende Akeem distraught at that miss. Sturt event did a nice job containing, wasn't even close. I'll tell you what it was close to, though, John, is hitting the rim. Yeah, you're right, but the shot clock violation comes into play. So, John, if you're Georgia Tech, who do you go to on this possession? That's an interesting call right there. It has not <laughs> been Miles Kelly's night, but I'm playing, uh, you know, the analytics, the data, the trends. Miles Kelly is averaging 26 points. He's had unbelievable second halves. He's proven he can hit timely buckets. Put the ball in your best player's hands. Get out of the way. Make him, you know, let him make a play. Let him create. It's Debo Coleman with a career-high 24 points tonight. He's hit five of Tech's six threes. Kelly... Five of 19 from the floor, 0 for 6 from 3. They'll put 3 tenths of a second back on the clock, so 18 flat. The next question I have for you, John, is no matter who takes the shot, when do you take it? Oh, I think you've got to give yourself an opportunity for a second second chance putback. Um, you know, I'd probably try to put Debo and Miles on the same side because the way Debo's shooting the ball, you're not going to get help off a shooter. You put one of your bigger guards going to the basket. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Worst case, draw the foul. Uh, Miles Kelly can finish in traffic. He's got the size advantage, but that's what I would do coming out of here. ISO situation, get Miles Kelly going to the rack on Debo Kelly's side, and um, hopefully that negates the help. If they suck in and help, kick it to your best shooter, Debo Coleman on the night. It's his, it's his time to shine. You've got Brooks on Coleman and O'Connor on Kelly. They might play with the senior, Sturdivant. Takes care of the basketball. Might go through him as well. Here we go. Sturdivant 
10 seconds. Coleman doesn't have space. It's down to five. Sturvant going up. It's smothered and blocked. And Reeves fouls with two seconds and change left. Max Brooks, he's led the America East Conference in blocks the last two years. That might be one of the biggest of his career. Riverhawks dialed in defensively right there. No breathing room for the Jackets. Sturdivant had a glimpse of hope, but Brooks swallowed him up. Big free throws right here. Georgia Tech has no timeouts. And the transfer from Division II Bloomfield, Andres Fulgencio shooting. He was an 82% free throw shooter last year. And so far tonight, he's now one for one. Hits them both. No timeouts for Georgia Tech. Sturdivant catches it going towards the basket. He's got to go half court heave to tie. No, and UMass Lowell takes down Georgia Tech. 